Hi everyone, this is a continuation of a series of videos regarding vital sign and all we're focusing is your understanding of vital sign because once you get the concept of vital sign you're on your way to understanding so many things about how the body works and what to do when things doesn't seem right or feel right. In this part of the video I'm going to be talking about body temperature and what you can learn from your body temperature when you see those changes and you are wondering are you hot are you cold um, do you have a fever don't you have a fever and what do you make of those things when you observe those change in temperature so I'll be right back stay tuned welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Dr. D. Terrence Foster if this is the first time that you're joining me let me just extend a very special and warm welcome to you wherever you are in the world it's indeed a pleasure to have you. On this channel, we focus on simplifying medical issues for everyone, particularly those who may have felt left out. Uh, we produce a new video every week. I, can, I, ask, you, <laughs> I ask you to consider subscribing uh, to this channel. Um, it is free, it will cost you nothing. And again, we produce a new video every week. Now, so let's talk about body temperature. Now, the average body temperature for a healthy normal person is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit however it may range from 97.8 to 99.1 degrees Fahrenheit uh, anything higher than the average temperature is generally considered a fever and you may be asking well what if my temperature is 98.7 do I have a fever technically you do but let's look at what the CDC says about fever now the CDC consider a person to have a fever when he or she has a temperature that is greater than 100.4 or 30 degrees Celsius. Now, they also recommend that if you have a temperature of greater than 101 degrees Fahrenheit for more than two days and you've been trying to control that temperature, for example, you may be taking Tylenol or anti-inflammatory or whatever you're doing to control your fever and it's not working, and you're probably feeling lousy or you, even if you're not feeling lousy a temperature of 101 that is persistent then you need to consult your doctor and also they said that you definitely need to see your doctor if your temperature is more than 100.3 degrees Fahrenheit now why would that be so important because if your temperature remains elevated at 103 degrees Fahrenheit um, you most likely have an illness that need to be addressed and therefore you should consult your doctor. Um, you don't want to wait and try to figure that out. Um, you need to see your doctor. So in that case you're looking at an emergency condition where you need to see a doctor because your temperature is so high. Now there's another condition that I must talk about is hypothermia which is a drop in body temperature. Whenever your body temperature falls below 95 degrees Fahrenheit that is considered what is called hypothermia. For most people your temperature will not get that but if you're living in a place that is very cold uh, or you're in the snow or you're out there and God knows what you're doing but it is possible that your temperature could get that low but if, now if your body temperature um, is below 95 degrees then the question is why? If you're what is called hypothermic meaning you have a body temperature less than or equal to 95 degrees then you also need to consult your doctor because that also need to be addressed as well. Now most of us expect um, fever when we have an illness or an infection and that is, that is usually the, the, the main reason why our body temperature would increase. But also there are other things that cause our, our temperature to, to uh, be elevated. For example, whether or not the environment we're in is hot or cold that will determine our body temperature. For those of us who operate a clinic, we'll see some patient who may be outside waiting to come inside the clinic and very often they may be in their, their car or they may be just sitting out on a chair or bench or whatever and by the time they get to us then they're very hot or they'll have a temperature which is elevated and maybe in the range of um, a fever. So what do you do as a clinician? Then you have to hear on the side of caution. You have to take precaution and assume that even though it is likely that they may have an elevated temperature because of the environment you have to consider them as 
potentially having a fever since we're in an you know since we're living in a time of coronavirus because the last thing we want to do is to have a patient who have a fever because of coronavirus and we're assuming that it's the environment so it's better we take that extra step therefore it's better to take that extra precaution and treat that patient as though they do have um, or at least have the potential of having symptoms of coronavirus and therefore should be treated accordingly now according to of course the protocol of each clinic now other things that could cause one to have a fluctuating temperature is of course dehydration whether you're drinking a hot or cold drinks or whether um, exercise can also cause your temperature to change as well um, whether you're stress or you're you know um, living with high stress level can also do that if you have a thyroid disease or thyroid disorder that can also cause uh, fluctuation in temperature now one thing to bear in mind is that older adults do not control their body temperature as well as younger adult older adult may be ill without having a fever or any signs of um, temperature variation so that is something uh, to know or their temperature variation may not be that marked as say someone who is much younger so um, it's one of those things to bear in mind now how do we measure temperature now there's so many different ways so many different thermometer that are available um, but the guideline most of us use is that established by the American Academy of Pediatric we could take the temperature by the mount where we put a thermometer under our tongue and keep it there for about uh, three minutes and um, most thermometer now they have an electronic um, alarm where it will beep after three minutes and then you just take it out and look at the uh, temperature now there are other thermometer that are that are for example don't have a beep you just put it under your tongue it's mercury based or other uh, substance now the hair canal or the, the ear lobe or the ear canal um, specifically the t what is called the tympanic membrane that is a membrane deep in the canal that can also be an accurate point of accessing and taking temperature now um, one of the things is to make sure that there's no excess one of the things is to make sure there's no excess air wax um, that is built up in the air because otherwise um, the temperature may not be as accurate and also um, you know the temperature may be just taken on the earlobe that's another option another way you could measure the, the uh, temperature is by putting uh, the thermometer on the, the armpit against the body and hold it there for about five uh, minutes or you could do um, you could measure um, the temporal or the forehead forehead or the temporal region can be very useful in taking um, temperature you basically move the uh, thermometer um, from your forehead along your temporal and there are others that you just point and shoot literally just you, uh, these are infrared thermometer and you get your temperature now now there's also rectal uh, temperature that could be taken where the thermometer is inserted into the rectum and often also beep as well um, those are you know uh, there's um, as I said there's so many different thermometers that are out there um, that one could use to um, assess um, temperature generally temperature that are taken rectally or by the uh, tympanic membrane through the ear canal um, is one degree higher than temperature that are taken orally or um, from the forehead or the temporal region um, so bear that in mind when you assess or evaluate um, these temperatures when you're taking them one, one of the things to also bear in mind is when you're taking these is that these must always these uh, thermometer must some are disposable and um, but some are not and those that are not disposable should be cleaned according to the appropriate protocol established by your center uh, very often soap and water is very useful or alcohol based uh, cleaning is uh, recommended but um, most of these thermometer will have um, a labeled or an insert um, that comes with it that tells you how it should be cleaned so make sure that you adhere to those uh, cleaning method that's very very important now 
we're almost coming to the end of the, the vital sign series. We have respiration or respiratory rate coming up in the next series. We've done so far, we've done blood pressure, we've done pulse or heart rate, and this is temperature. I encourage you to like, comment, and share these videos on this channel uh, with your friends, family, or anyone. I also ask you to uh, subscribe to this channel. It's free and it will cost you nothing. And when you do, make sure that you click the notification bell so that you will be notified each time we release a new video. Finally, remember, let each of us strive to keep a healthy mind and body. Thank you so much for watching.